Hi everyone, I just put out a video on how to upgrade your stock speakers from your Sprinter van to uh, aftermarket improved um, speakers. But in that video, what I didn't tell you, I also put in one of these. And the reason for that is um, if you really want a really good, clear um, base while you're driving in 80 miles on the highway, you really would want to have one of these to improve the, uh, um, the overall range of your sound. And um, I didn't specifically make a video for the auto installation process of it, but I can try to explain as much as I can using the old footages that I have and the old photo that I shot. And um, the reason I do it with, along with the uh, speaker upgrade is if I pull out the wall panels to install the speaker, that is the perfect timing for, for me to lay out um, uh, power lines and the uh, signal lines for this guy. And this is a very simple one to install. As you can see, it's a subwoofer with the amplifier in it. All you have to do is to connect the power and connect the RCA, either RCA or the high power um, um, uh, sound signal, whichever one that you want to use. And um, that's it. And you can sit it on the floor of any part of your van and um, give you a much, much, much better sound on the low range level. All right. In terms of audio wiring, the uh, subwoofer have two options. One is the low level RCA inputs, which is I'm going to be using. If you don't have an RCA output in your head unit, then you have to tap into your speaker wire, which is going to be connected to this high level input port. In my situation, I do have a preamp RCA output that it's not being used from the Alpine 809. So all I have to do is to uh, connect the RCA cable and, and uh, wire it through the car and go directly into the uh, subwoofer. If you only had the OEM head unit that you don't have a RCA out, then you have to tap into the left channel and the right channel speaker wire as a high output wire. For that, you have to wire the left side of the car and the right side of the car and bring them together all into the uh, subwoofer, which is probably not going to be easy. If I were to do it, I probably would tap right behind the head unit where the um, channel wires comes out and uh, I just tap that and bring the wire all the way to the back. And at least that you only have to tap one single location. Anyway, what I'm going to show you from now on is to uh, connect with the um, RCA output. Besides the subwoofer, you're going to need a couple more things. One is the RCA cable that connects from your head unit and brings it all the way back to the vehicle. And um, the kits that I use have 17 feet of wires. And that will be enough to bring the uh, signal all the way to the um, second row passenger seat. Another set of parts you're going to need is this um, power wiring kit, also from Clutchfield. I'm going to put the link down below. Once I connected the RCA output in the back of the uh, head unit, I just need to run the wire inside the console. And um, you can see part of the cable that is going through there. And um, it will go under the uh, floor mat. And um, it will eventually bring it next to the driver's seat. The main positive power is coming from the battery. And I connect it directly to the battery terminal. And as you can follow the wires, comes out of the terminal and to the uh, fuse box that came with the kit that have a 16 amp uh, fuse in it. And then it go along and exit that box and uh, go next to the um, driver's seat where it meets up with the um, um, RCA line. And all these Floor mats over here is a soft material where you can just peel away and then you hide the line underneath it and uh, it shouldn't have any rough edges and just be careful uh, when, when it meets all the corners and make sure it have enough room it doesn't rub against it. And it will run along the back of the seat and all the way to the pillar. Besides the red power wires and the um, um, RCA wire, there will be a third wire going into the uh, pillar which is the uh, blue 12 volt remote wire. It will connect between the um, fuse box with the ignition on power and connect that to the um, 
subwoofers um, remote turn on input. So whenever you turn on your car, um, that remote wire will tell the um, subwoofer to turn on. The blue wire will come out from the back of the driver's seat where the fuse box are and join with the uh, red main power supply lines and also the RCA wire and then go into the uh, to that point, you're going to have to remove the pillar cover and uh, fish the wire through and to behind the wall. Here's a picture of the pillar with the uh, cover removed. This round hole over here can be a wire through points and there's more behind it as well. So all three of the wires, the main power wires, the RCA wires and the blue um, remote wire will go through the back of this panel over here from the pillar and um, eventually I will have it exit through here. That location is exactly underneath the second row passenger seat where I'm going to put the uh, subwoofer um, under. Um, if you want to put the subwoofer even further back and then you're going to have to uh, buy longer um, main power lines and RCA lines. One last wire you have to worry about after that is the ground wire. For that, find a suitable location behind the panel, um, drill a small hole, file off the uh, panes, and um, connect the um, negative wire securely with a tapping screw. And that's it. That is done. As you can see, it tucked neatly underneath the seat. It takes up very little space, and it doesn't look obnoxious at all, as a matter of fact. You can't even see it unless I tell you there's a subwoofer underneath it. It sounds great, so I think this is a really good project to do. That's it. Thumbs up if you like the video, and um, thank you for watching.